A worker in this grubby South American shack is busy producing fake aspirin and pain relief tablets. Made from boric acid, more usually known as an antiseptic or insecticide. Counterfeiting drugs is a fast-growing, highly profitable business, not just in the developing world. 500,000 fake medicines were seized by EU customs in 2005. Last year, that number had shot up to more than 4 million. The World Health Organization says more than half the pharmaceuticals sold on the Internet are fake. The UK is a major distribution point for counterfeit medicines, often manufactured in India or China. Um, this is all seized property um, in this evidence store. It all comes from um, raids that have been carried out by MHRA officers. Well, this is a um, canister with um, dog vitamins. Um, when you open it up, there's counterfeit Viagra inside there. In our experience, counterfeiters are always going to go for the high-priced, high-turnover, high-demand products. They watch the markets like a hawk. Jim Thompson campaigns on behalf of patients in Europe. In his own survey, he sent off for more than 30 medicines from Internet pharmacies. Almost two-thirds proved to be either substandard or counterfeit. The results left little doubt that people's lives are being put at risk. Some have the active ingredient, active pharmaceutical ingredient, the API, and some don't. So you find cocktails of different ingredients in these brick dust, lead-based road paint. So you know, this, this is arriving and it's killing people. And the counterfeits are not just being sold on the internet. Customs officers at Belgium's Zaventem Airport intercepted a huge haul of fake antibiotics from Dubai, which it's feared may have found their way into high street pharmacies. Eli Lilly has seen a Europe-wide recall of a batch of its antipsychotic medicine Zyprexa when a sharp-eyed wholesaler spotted a couple of tiny printing errors on the packaging. You can see from, from a visual perspective, it's almost impossible to tell which one's counterfeit and which one's genuine. The quality of the packaging is, is remarkable, really, uh, on the counterfeit. So how to beat the counterfeiters? The theme of a recent conference at the European Commission in Brussels. The Commission is preparing new legislation on medicines counterfeiting, but Commissioner McCreevy also believes there could be better enforcement of existing laws. What I've tried to do in my visitations to member states is to emphasise to them that it is in their own particular interest to make sure that they are not being used as a, an area where counterfeit or pirated goods are being distributed from. And I would accept that not all member states treat these issues as seriously as some other member states. In the meantime, attempts by the pharmaceutical companies to introduce anti-counterfeiting measures are hampered by the way medicines are traded. Because prices vary around Europe, it's perfectly legal for medicines to be bought by a wholesaler in one country and to make a profit by selling on to a higher-priced country. To do this, pills need to be repackaged with patient information in their own language. The French pharmaceutical company Sanofi Aventis is playing an active role in an industry-wide track-and-trace coding system. The aim is to have one harmonized code for Europe so that pharmacists can authenticate a product. But for this system to work, the same packaging must stay in place from start to finish. The key elements to fight counterfeit is to maintain the pack integrity. And we need to maintain the pack integrity uh, of the manufacturer products all along the supply chain. And to do that, we need to have a, an official ban on repackaging in order to be sure that the code that we, the manufacturer put on the pack will be maintained. What matters is that patients feel confident that the medicine they're using comes from somewhere that looks like this, and not from somewhere like this, where the only active ingredient in the pills may be brick dust. <laughs>